and then yeah. we can do a whole show on it. Okay. Sorry. No problem. We're going to do that. We will do that. Ready? Mm -hmm. In three, two, and one. Hey folks, welcome back to your Friday Curl State Update. I am Darren Ahern with Remax Results, and I also have with me on this Cinco de Mayo, the day we should have margaritas and tacos, the man sitting over here with all the money, the presidential Kernan. bank mortgage. Terry Kern. There you are. How we doing? Ooh, Cinco de Mayo. Yes. Yes. Cinco we're into May. Yes. Hard this to is, believe. This is how we know we're into May, and I heard somebody say, you know you're in May because you don't know. You may get rain, you may get snow, you may get 80 degrees, you may get... We had like, I what is it, Um, we had sleet up on the mountain where we live like three days ago. I woke up in the morning, we had all that rain and sleeting, sleet, white pellets everywhere. Well, uh, Deep Creek got two inches and somebody that owns a place up there yep. said, uh, jokingly, they reopened the slopes <laughs> for an afternoon just so they could recoup some of the loss because that was yeah. the biggest snowfall of the year. That's crazy. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, Cinco de Mayo. All right, so uh, we are going to get our tacos and all of our good stuff this weekend, and it's going to be good. So let's get right into it, Terry. Numbers real fast. Uh, active homes, 261. Last week, I think we were 254. We're up six homes in one week, almost one a day. So in one year at this pace, ladies and gentlemen, this is what's really exciting news about real estate. At this pace in our area, if we get one house more every single day, we just need to get one more bot. That's one more that we can get one more family every day into these homes to keep it level. Um, but uh, so yeah, we, we're, we're making progress, but it's not even close to the norm. Uh, resales 149 right now, and days on market for that is 44 days. So that's come down. We hit the high of 53 average days on the market. We're down to 44, which means the market's moving faster than ever before. It's the, the speed of it and people putting in multiple offers and contracts is pushing down the time on the market for these homes. Um, and, and that's just astounding to me, but this is the time of the year. This is where the demand is and what's going on. New construction, 103 homes. This is way down. We've been averaging a lot, like 140 to 160, but we're down to 103. And that's simply because all of those buyers out there that are tired of getting outbid are buying brand new construction. And they're willing, if they can afford it, to go higher and get the loans and all that. Um, the cheapest brand new build single family home in the whole county, Terry, is in Thurmont for three hundred and sixty four thousand nine hundred. So, wow. yeah, under four hundred thousand dollars, you can still get a brand new build. But the average brand new single family home in the area that's is in Thurmont. Yeah, that's up in Thurmont okay. on Walnut, thirty three Walnut. Yeah. Okay. So anybody who wants to buy, build a brand, get a brand new house, you need to give me a call. Take you up to Thurmont where we live, and it's nice. Um, it's real nice because you're sitting there looking at the mountains and it's a great view. So 720 was a single family home, townhouse 482.9. So we have definitely seen brand new construction and prices. Um, Terry, what this really is reflecting as I keep hearing it, the base prices for brand new construction building is seemingly continue to keep going up little by little by little. They're raising the uh, price of base home prices on construction yeah and, and and like i've said on the show before they're raising it because the appreciation is there yep. the appreciation the ability to raise it is there they're not doing it out of necessity like they had to two and a half years ago when COVID hit and the supply chains dried up and they couldn't get supplies and lumber went you know lumber quadrupled in price okay that lumber is down to where it was around the pandemic so so the prices are coming down in the building industry so that that's good yeah so coming soon 60 pending under contracts uh 511 we got 184 brand new builds so that means there's one less than one month supply of brand new builds 327 on the resale so 511 is um, a little higher than we've seen but that's just because everything is getting bought up as it comes out pretty much so sold in the last 30 days 326 Mm, low number days on market 17 for that 515 for the resale so this is the difference as you guys know i i don't take the brand new builds and all that because that skews the data in every regard in, in in some things but the brand the resales on the single family home is at 515 in the resale townhouse is 390 is where the average is on these um last 30 days and so we could take the previous numbers and such we're pretty much on track terry for about six percent this year in the area for appreciation growth which, believe it or not, is about average to above average, a little above average. 
Um, so we're still on that track, and until something changes, that's uh, where we're at. 101.1 on the list of sold, and so we are people above asking, going higher, higher, higher. Still going on, yeah. I had a, uh, uh, I have a deal that's going on now. It was uh, just came on the market yesterday. I've got borrowers interested, and I called the listing agent. They're submitting an offer, and I said, uh, I said, uh, did you, did you? Price this aggressively because I haven't had a chance to look at the numbers and I'm not a realtor I'm not an appraiser but I know enough to see if it's a you know priced reasonable yep and he says well he says and he was being a bit sarcastic he says isn't it our job to price it aggressively so we get an escalation so instead of us getting blamed for overpricing the house Somebody takes the blame for over escalating the house <laughs> when the appraiser has an issue, and I said that, that's that's a Punch's Pilot uh, move right yeah, there. Yeah, that sure is, is. Clean my hands of this one. Wow. Um, but I thought it was interesting, as he said, it's going to get a lot more traffic. It's going to get a lot more bids, and it's going to be priced higher. It's going to sell higher. The, than if I priced it higher, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. And, and I thought that was interesting, but he said, this way we can't get blamed as a realtor for overpricing. It's the people that are over escalating. <laughs> over escalating. So I thought that was interesting. Well, I just said one this week, these guys, um, friends of mine, they are from Delaware. They're moving here. They got their home under contract over by the beach and they're able to walk away with enough to pay cash over here. And we were up in Waynesboro where they want to live near their daughter. And nice first level living. They're older folk and first level living. And they just, you know, there's been nothing out there. And so this place came up. They're in a crunch. They don't want to rent. They don't want to put their stuff in storage, the whole nine yards. And of course, there's like four other offers and it escalated and it went all the way. The last other one went to 300000 It went up like 25000 almost for twenty, and went above to 301 and got it for them. So... It was one of those situations, like you said, it's just like, hey, um, it's not going to get any cheaper. Don't blame me. Yeah, don't <laughs> blame me. It's not going to get cheaper. I told them, you're going to have to pay three or $4,000 for storage, and then the inconvenience of that, and how do you calculate this, and what about this, and what about that? And and then by the fact that, hey, you're going to make up for it, hopefully at, at the rate that things are going up, you'll make up for it a little over time. But the big thing I asked them, Terry, was this, how long do you guys plan on staying in this home? And they're like, Till we die. So I said, okay, who cares what you pay at this point? That's you got to right. have a roof over your head, something that's comfortable, something that you love, and uh, everybody else remaining will just take care of business for you afterwards. And so they were really, really happy. And I was happy for them, Terry, uh, because in the last two or three weeks, it's been good to be able to have two or three of my buyers to be able to help strategize and professionally represent them and help them. To get what they want and um, and beat out some of these other offers and things like that, and so um, so I had a good couple of last weeks getting taking good. care of business, good. man, and getting her done. So good all right, you. well, it's, it's, yep. it's funny you mentioned that that scenario is a older couples moving back from the beach to be closer to their daughter. Yep, is the real reason they're moving back to be closer to the grandchildren? Because I do about three loans a year, four loans a year, where people are moving back to this area. Yeah to be closer to their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that they're be coming back to be closer to the grandchildren. No, that's, no that's grandkids. Just, oh, no. They like the daughter more than anybody. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> No uh, grandkids. All right. Uh, the, but you're right, that's that, the That norm. happens a lot. Yeah. No, no. That's they're why gonna, I recommend if you're going to retire yeah. and you have grandchildren that are on the way or on the horizon, don't go by in another state. Rent. Yep. A, to see if you're going to stick there. And, and B, once the grandchildren come up, come around, there's usually one of the two in the couple, or both, that say, hey, we got to we gotta move back. Yeah. So, so I always recommend rent for a year, see how things play out. With my six boys, man, I'm predicting, Terry, I could have about 20, 20 grandkids or 18, so I'm going to have a big RV, and we're going to be traveling all over the country. And they get to come camping with Pap Pap. Yeah, that's, that's how that's going to work. The key. They can they can bunk in and have fun in campgrounds and s'mores, and uh, and then uh, and then I'll send them on their way back to the boys. <laughs> so that's my idea. All right, so we got the numbers done. 
Hot topic in real estate news. Um, I just want to touch on this, Terry. We're going to do a whole segment on this because it is firing up. It is blowing up your TV and the news. I guarantee you've seen about this. Is that the hot topic, Terry, is the LLPA. The LLPA. Has anybody heard of that? That is the loan level price adjustment. This is the whole thing where we get people asking more than ever, Terry, is um, why in the world with a higher credit score, it seems like we're getting penalized and we're paying more for this loan and the whole thing are than somebody with a lower credit score and they're not paying for it. And what's going on? What's the news? What's blowing us up like this? Yeah, so so it is the hot topic that, <laughs> that I'm dealing with. And people are you know, it, it goes back to what I've said on the show a million times. Fear breeds fear. So it does. You know, anger breeds anger. Enthusiasm breeds enthusiasm. It's never more true than it is today with the LLPA. What is an LLPA? As Darren said, it's a loan level price adjustment. What does that mean to you? Anybody buying a house? Anybody refinancing a house? This, this constitutes refis. I'm going to be very, very, very clear here. It only deals with homes, with loans, not homes. It only deals with loans that are being purchased by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. All right. It does not count for USDA, does not count for VA, does not count for FHA. Very, very, very clear here. People, you know, it's the old don't believe what you think. Don't always believe what you think. Don't always believe what you hear. Yep. So this affects basically conventional loans only. Now, let's break down conventional loans real quick. Who does it affect? It affects everybody that's getting a conventional loan. You, regardless of your credit score, regardless of how much you're putting down, you are going to be affected by the new LLPAs. Except if you're a first-time home buyer, or if you fall under what is called the what is called the home ready home possible this is for lower income so in our area let's just take our area it's same as Montgomery County um, Washington County's lower but our area of Frederick that runs at hundred and fourteen thousand dollars combined income so if you have somebody buying at hundred and fourteen thousand dollars combined income and they're buying a house in a certain census tract if they make less than that, then we can look at home ready and home possible. So a lot of the people that are being affected by this, it's not as many as you'd think. Yep. But it's all, everybody's all up in arms. Let me explain very quickly what it is, and we can touch on it on another show. No, we're going to do a whole, let's do a segment. So we can just, do a whole segment. Yeah, whet everybody's appetite so we can get. get, get so up. this is what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have come up with, and what they do is they are taking a look at different layers of risk and they're adding fees to it. Now, they're, they're not adding $500 flat fees. They're adding percentages of the loan. Okay. okay. Yep. Is it a tremendous amount? In some instances, it's a huge amount. Now, these have all been baked into the rates today. So, the, so what's going on with the fear and the, everybody's up in arms and you know I just had a, a call with all my loan officers because they were getting bombarded is basically explain this may not affect you first of all and if it does it's already been baked in the rates now they have they have uh, postponed some of these things that were supposed to happen May 1st to August 1st because everybody's kind of up in arms and everybody's <laughs> trying to figure it out but the the investors Okay, the, who we buy money from. Mm -hmm. We sell people's money. We sell our own money, but we also sell other people's if it's conducive to. And we sell directly to Fannie and Freddie. So so it's baked in the rates <coughs> already because we were expecting this for loans that are guaranteed by Fannie and Freddie after May 1st. So a lot of these things are, are baked in. Biggest thing people are up in arms with is the... Basically, the LLPAs are now, and they've been around since pretty much COVID. So the number one area that it affected when it first hit with COVID is they basically went after second homes and investment properties. Right. And they added a huge fee, a huge percentage. So let's take a look at a second home, what it is. So if you're putting, 
let's say 20% down on a second home. This is a Fannie or Freddie, second home or investment property. You're going to get hit with three and three eighths coming out of the gate mm. by Fannie Mae. So the rate is going to be pushed through the roof. Why? They don't want to guarantee second homes and investment properties. So how do we get around that? Presidential, we have a 7-1 arm. It is awesome. Number one program we've been selling over the first quarter of 2023 is our presidential portfolio arm. Seven years fixed, very competitive rate. Uh, I just closed a, good, uh, a couple, bought down in the villages in Florida, bought a $300,000 house, and I, they put 20% down, and I got them a rate of uh, six and a half. If they went with Fannie or Freddie on a 30-year fixed rate, the rate would have been well over 8%. Woo! Fannie and Freddie are saying, we don't want these loans. <laughs> How do we guarantee that we're not going to get these loans yeah. on our books? Do this. Do this. <laughs> do exactly what we're doing. Okay? This will make them think So twice. those numbers have been around for well over a year. Okay. Okay? But what they're changing and that people are up in arms is if you have a 780 or above credit score, which you can't get any better than that. Right. If you put 20% down, you're now going to get dinged with uh, a half a point. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now it's not like an investment property, but on a primary residence, a half a percent. So on a $400,000 loan, you're getting charged an extra $2,000 at to, to, to close on that loan. And that makes me say, hey, what did I do wrong by having good credit? <laughs> Correct. So what they're doing is they are overcompensating in areas. This is my, this is my opinion. They're overcompensating in areas. And that's what the delay is. The public is getting outraged. And, yeah. and all you got to do is say, is what everybody's saying is, if you have great credit, you're going to get penalized if you put 20% down. And is that really what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> but it's not a huge penalty, right? Yeah. And it's already baked into the rates. So all this uproar is, you know, the consumer group. Chatterboxes. It, it is chatterbox. So we can spend a whole show, and I'll, and what I'd like to do is explain it more. Yeah. And what Break I also want down. to talk about is the scenarios. what is the significance of Fannie and Freddie? Yep. Where does that money go to? You asked me before the yeah. show. Who's getting all that Who money? Who gets all that money <laughs> basically goes to the Treasury Department. So we're going to talk about that and okay. we're going to combine it all into a show. But let's reiterate, it only counts towards loans that are somebody that is not lower income, somebody that is buying a conventional mortgage. Okay? okay. All right. But they are real, but they're already baked in. So you can wait another week. Yeah. Next yeah. Week you Get your questions. That? Yeah. Yeah. Bring your questions about this whole hot topic you're seeing blow up in the news about mortgages and the housing industry. And Terry's going to break it down even more. We want to hear from you and what you think or how it affects you. Um, best thing to do is give him a call and all that. But yeah, we're going to be here and he's going to talk more about it so we can... Um, Definitely help everybody out get a better understanding if you haven't so already. So, good? Good. That's good stuff. Right. Oh, man. All right. What's next on the uh, mortgage world? What's happening? Mortgage world. Okay. Anticipation was very, 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 very high, mm -hmm. right? And the anxiety was very, very, very high. Not the fact that the feds were going to raise rates a quarter percent. Okay. Which everybody knew that they, they were going to do it. Okay. They knew that they were going to do it on Wednesday afternoon, raise it a quarter percent. But the most important part of that day was the tone on the delivery of what's going to happen next. Okay. And basically, they signaled exactly what everybody was hoping is that there would be a pause in raising interest rates. So it's not going to be like, okay, we're going to raise in, we're going to raise in May. So the Fed meets every six weeks. So we're going to raise again in you know, the end of June, and then we're going to raise again in August. And that did not happen. They basically said, we're done raising rates. We're going to just solely go off of the Wait and see. data. <laughs> so the first data thing that comes out yeah. was on Friday. Okay, was, here it comes. And here it comes, sink of a mile. <laughs> and the first piece of data that was, you know, expected to help and quell the fears of inflation was the jobs number. So what do you think happened when the jobs numbers came out? I don't know. What happened? <laughs> we went from 3.5% unemployment. Yep. 
down to 3.4 percent. Wow, unemployment came down. Okay, so it came down. More jobs were created. Okay. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about that, and we'll and I'll remind you kind of what my theory behind this whole inflation thing is, is that, as I've said before, the Fed can only raise interest rates to stop inflation. That's the only thing that they can do. And it's, it's the brakes meant to stop the job market. The job market has been improving or staying the same over the last um, over the last several months so we're back down to 3.4 incredibly low number yeah okay but what does that mean is basically here are some bright spots to that number one is it's great that that we're doing more jobs inflation has been coming down a little and jobs have not been really uh suffering so that means that we're what they call a soft landing it's not okay. a hard crash so what we're taking a look at is the um, couple things, couple numbers that stood out. One is the African American community, which usually has a higher uh, unemployment rate. They have a record low of 4.7 percent. So that's a great number to come out. Where are the areas where we're seeing increases? Airlines, hotels, restaurants. Okay. Service industry. Service industry. We know that that's happening. But here's what I want to tell you that that made me happy is the builders. Yep. Remember, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. The builders increased jobs, 15,000 new jobs in the building industry last month. The other area that increased jobs last month, 11,000 new jobs for factories. So yep. those two production. things are showing that we need to make more production. We're going to make more items, which will increase the supply, which will lower the cost. Yep. Increase the supply <laughs> helps meet the demand which will lower the cost. I'm a big believer in if you if you throw enough things on the market, it's gonna control inflation. So things are pointing good, positive arrow for me and my theories about getting more things on the market. So 15 more thousand people out there building homes, yep. 11,000 people making widgets. So we're gonna have more widgets and more homes on the market, which I think will in turn help inflation. That's what we need. All right. Anything else? No. Uh, just one other thing about uh, the labor force is big thing is labor force participation. So since October 2002, the labor force participation rate was the lowest in April of 2020. Okay. Yep. So think about that. 60% of the people that could work were either employed or looking for a job. That's what a participation rate is. 60%. In June of 2020 or June of 2003, it was at 66.5%, okay? Today it is at 62.6%, okay? So we're in a good area for the participation rate. So that's what people also look like are people jumping out of the market. If people are jumping out of the market, you're going to have lower unemployment. So all right, I was talking Sorry. about participation. We had some participation in the last week or two here with some of my homes, and it's called the Home Inspector of Participation. Just when you thought, Terry, I said last week, no major issues with a place. I'm helping someone buy, and then we do the home inspection. He says, bring in an engineer, because we knew there was going to be maybe a foundational issue, and sure enough, boom, there it is, and uh, it's crazy. So, we brought in two companies and dug down and checked it out. And there was like, we could tell, I could kind of tell the veneers kind of like a little off and the windows a little like, uh, some just doesn't seem right. Yeah, it's not right at all. When they put this foundation in this whole uh, front of the house in this foyer area, um, somebody, somebody forgot to put more concrete down below. How's that? And so we had an eight inch foundation. They had measured and did a bunch of testing and some things and checking it out. And we realized, well, there's the call for it. And so now I'm waiting any minute to get a full report, another one back to say this is what it takes. Now, here's the dilemma. <laughs> I'm representing the buyer. The buyers, they like the house. They're a little freaked out, though. One of the contractors said, we're talking that's got to be ripped down. It's got to come down top to bottom. We're talking $80,000 to rebuild it. This is what it's going to be. Of course, the seller said, no way. We're not coming down $80,000 in price or we're not paying all that to do this. There's no way we want a second opinion.
brought in another company yesterday and we're waiting on that to come back. From the preliminary, what I heard is that it's, you know, how do they reinforce the foundational underneath of the slab? And what do they do to be able to warrant and guarantee that that's not going to move anymore? It's done. It's fixed. It's not going to be a catastrophic issue. And it's surely not going to affect my buyer whenever they're going to be now a seller one day selling the house. And all of a sudden somebody runs into the what? Same problem or worse problem. So therefore, uh, working through that, never, never easy to do. And um, it's really a major thing because I said to my buyers, look, I need to know what you want to do coming up once we have all the information. Do you want to move forward or do you want to just get another house? What do you want to do? Because I don't want you to have buyer's remorse, not only because of the price you're paying, but just because of the conditional side of it as well with something that you already know. And of course, the seller, they were not aware of the severity or none of this stuff like that because this was something that was done previous to them owning it. So, of course, I asked the other agent, did they tell you? Were they aware of this? Did this come up when they bought it? I mean, we got to start knowing some information here as much as possible. And so, therefore, we um, work through some of those details and things like that. Um, so, my, my guys, you know, we're, we're just basically in the preliminary stuff still about how do we go forward with this. Um, the seller, the good news is it sounds like the seller is willing to cooperate. They realize this is a known material fact. It's a latent defect. If we don't deal with it with this buyer that's in place, we're going to deal with it with somebody else. So what does that mean? You can't hide this, boys and girls. You have to disclose. You got to disclose now or what's or been found. Done. Yeah. So that's what we're dealing with as far as um, on that end of it. So, all right. Next week, we're going to talk. I'm going to be able to share a little bit about um, some more issues and some things that have been coming across and appraisal, things like that. So, and then also down the road, I want to talk really quickly about ownership rules, how a property is affected and what and who makes the decisions and what's the legal stuff that when it deals with power of attorney, trusts, LLCs, corporations and all those things, because that is really, really important. We're starting to find uh, some issues I have run into with somebody not knowing exactly what do I need? Grandma died. What about this? Who's the power of attorney? Who's who's the in fact and all these legal stuff. So. All right, folks, take care. Hope you have a wonderful Cinco de Mayo. Go get you an awesome taco and one of those margarita things or whatever you like, and have a great weekend. Take care now. We'll be here next week for your Frederick Real Estate Update. All right, see you guys.